now we've learnt something new, hopefully taken away some of the mystery about state engines and state machines. Let's put it into practice, let's get it going. So let's create a flashlight script. Now I mention this because anybody that did my old guide, they'd have my flickering flashlight. If you have a look, you already have a state engine here. Okay, so there was a state engine in one of my latest scripts of the first guide. So what we're going to do, let's rebuild this from scratch. Okay, let's put together our own flickering flashlight. We're going to add some more functionality, of course. We're going to make it something that can be used across not just this project or if you're making a Slender project, but any kind of project where you want a flashlight. That would be awesome. So let's start off. Let's make a new script. Now this is a new one, so it's going to be a flashlight manager. It's going to have some more functionality than the original one. Let's open that up in our script editor. So let's start off. So, what kind of states would our flashlight have? Let's create an enumerator for that. So, enum. This is going to be an enum for all the states of a flashlight. So, what are the states? I'm going to have it turned off. Have it so we can turn it on. And then I'm going to bring all the old stuff in too. And I still put in some flickering because that was fun. And then, not just for flickering, but just in case it powered down and you had a pickup to power it up again, you could reset it. And I think that's all the states I can think of for now. So let's create a variable that stores our state. Oops. So we have a variable that's declared with the name flashlight state, and we have to type cast it. So our variable will hold one of these values. So what are we going to be doing with our torch? Well, we want it to operate. We also want to check for any inputs. So let's create some functions for that. We're going to check for inputs. And then we're going to... We're going to be running our flashlight or driving the flashlight. So Uh, let's just go run flashlight. Okay, so of course we need to make those functions because we're trying to call them. So every update, we're going to check for any inputs. We're going to see if we're turning it on or off, or if it's gone to flickering and we can reset it. We're going to check for an input to reset as well. And after we've looked at all our inputs, we're going to assign a value to our flashlight state. And then when we have that value, we're going to run the flashlight. Let's look at that. So we create our switch. And our switch is going to be switching based on the value in that variable. So we set up our cases. So what do we have? So we have a case of the flashlight being turned off. We're going to have a case for when it's turned on. when it's flickering, we have a case when it's resetting. Okay, so there's our state engine based on our variable. So let's check for some inputs. So what kind of inputs? We'll have an on-off switch. 
So by default, let's just call it the key app. We're going to introduce something new. So let's go to the Unity scripting reference. We're going to research new book. Our result. A lot of information on inputs and different types of inputs we can have. We can look for a key, we can look for a mouse button, we can look for a predefined button that we've set up in our input manager. And I'll cover that later. So at the moment we're just going to be looking for keys. Now we see there's different, three different types of ways for looking for keys. Get key down. During the frame that the user starts pressing the key. So if I press the F, get key down will notice that just once when that happens, when it first goes down. And that's the only time it's going to return true. So what if we're holding the F button down? Get key. So we have input get key. Returns true while the user holds down the key. So this would be for every frame. If we're holding the F, as long as we're holding the F, get key would return true. And then the final different type is up. So for the frame that the user releases the key. Okay, so if you let go of the key, it will return true just in that one update. All right. So we'll just look with get key down. So in our inputs. If okay. looking for an input, and if that input is a get key down, and what key are we looking for? Code F. So we're going to check for an input. I'm going to check if that input is F. So F is going to be for turning our flashlight on and off. So we want to check which state our flashlight is in before we change it. So if if our flashlight state is currently equal. to our flashlight value of turned off, we want to turn it on. So we're going to say flashlight state is now equal to our flashlight being turned on. Okay, so that's off, turning it on. But what if we're already on? So else if If our flashlight state is already equal to turned on, then we're going to turn it off. So let's recap on that. We'll check for an input. If the player presses the F, we're going to see if the flashlight is off, we're going to turn it on. But if the flashlight's on, we're going to turn it off. Let's save that out. Creating a new scene for this. I'm going to save the scene. We're going to test our flashlight in this scene. Alright, let's create an empty game object. Zero it out. And this will be our flashlight. It's going to be our flashlight, so let's give it a light component. So, while we have our flashlight game object selected, component, a little bit of a guess where this will be ringing. Okay, so we've added the light component. Now, currently the type of light is set to a point light. Now, spotlight. Okay, because this is going to be spot, it's going to be pointing forwards. Alright, well that's just a component. Let's get back to the script. 
So we'll attach that script, our flashlight manager, to our flashlight. Save the scene. Let's see if our state engine is working with our inputs. So if I hit play, currently we're turned off. Now if I hit the F, see that? We're turned on. Now I hit the F again, turned off. Great. There we go. Our first inputs and running of our state manager. That's awesome. So we actually want to see more than just a value in the inspector or a console output. So let's look at some more stuff. We were working with a light component. Look at the light. What do we want to do? We want to turn it off and on. We want to enable it or disable it. So we have enabled as a variable of light here. We have an example. This is a generic example. Behavior.enabled. But we found this under our light reference. Okay, so we can quite happily say our light dot enabled. Let's add that in. And now to our state engine when we're running the flashlight. If we're turning off, you know, light enabled equals false. Because our flashlight is off. Now if our flashlight is on, our light is enabled. So it's true. Let's save that out and let's give it a test. We haven't got much to. We haven't got something to shine that light on. So let's even just create a cube. There we go. Where's our flashlight information? So hopefully that will shine on there. Let's give it a go. So currently we turned off. Let's hit the F. There we go. We're emitting light now. So that's turned on. And there we have it. That's excellent. So we've already set up our first script and we can turn our torch on and off. 